Hi, if you've received this video, it's because uh, we'd like to invite you to consider joining a program at Heritage High School called the AP Bridge. I'm going to do some introductions of people involved with the bridge, and then I'll tell you more about it. Um, you see on the screen our principal, Dr. Katie Gray. Underneath her, you see Valerie Harrison, our lead counselor. Underneath Ms. Harrison, in the picture to the right, is me, Gabe Fain. I am the AP instructional coach. I coordinate the bridge program. I also teach at Heritage uh, Social Studies. Tammy Ryder is the AP bridge math teacher that your student would have. And then Misty Perry is the AP bridge English teacher. Normally, this presentation was done live in our library auditorium. So these people would all be with me uh, presenting as well. So why are you here? Uh, after we've analyzed data on your students' middle school math performances, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, uh, your student has emerged as somebody who shows mathematical potential, but they are currently on the course track to complete calculus, specifically in our case, AP calculus, by the end of their senior year. I'll tell you more in a second about why calculus is so important for college. So to remedy this situation, to get students like yours on track to take calculus their senior year, we've created a program at Heritage High School that we're gonna call, that we call the AP Bridge. So why do we care about calculus so much? And this is coming from a social studies teacher. So I haven't seen a calculus classroom as a student since the 80s. But colleges is, have increasingly done studies that show that taking calculus in high school sometimes is a gatekeeper course as they're looking in a very competitive admissions environment for which applicants do we admit. Those that tend to have calculus on their transcripts stand out above and beyond other students. Why is this? Because they've shown that those in AP calculus are prepared for the rigors of a college level math and they've seen that those who are successful in AP Calculus were successful overall in their first year of college. These are from university studies. So some of the research that we pulled to, to show you this, uh, the sources on top, and then I've highlighted the relevant passages, that students who enroll in calculus in high school will graduate from college in four years. And then therefore, since this correlation exists, a lot of college admissions officers see calculus in high school as almost a prerequisite for admissions, especially to the more selective colleges and universities. So this isn't to say that a student without calculus won't get into college, but if we're trying to build the resumes of our students to be competitive for scholarships in all colleges or admissions to the most selective, we wanna make sure that calculus is something that every student can have on their resume if they show the mathematical potential to do that. So we took that kind of research and then we thought, well, let's talk to our students themselves. So we surveyed our 2019 graduates. So they would have graduated last year. We asked them a series of questions about what colleges did you accept to go to? Did you get offered any financial aid? Why do you think your application was successful? of the factors that you list, what do you believe is the most important? Do you think AP Calculus is important? And then give us some elaboration on why do you think AP Calculus was important? So in these results, we had 63 students. Uh, 19 went locally to University of Texas at Dallas, which is a pretty highly competitive academic school. Eight were at UT Austin. And then the range of other colleges were from Austin College, to out-of-state schools like Brigham Young in Utah, USC in California, Vanderbilt, Tennessee, Pepperdine, beautiful beach campus in California, and so on, as you can see. 75% uh, of these 63 students received some form of merit-based scholarship, which means based on their grades or their academic performance on SAT and the like, and or some kind of grants. So moving to the calculus question, of the 63 respondents, 62% said calculus was an important factor. You see that 13 of those yeses said it was required for their majors. 
and Levin said that taking calculus actually helped them with those entrance exams, the SAT or ACT. Their colleges recognized the rigor that calculus provided, uh, doing well in calculus and on the AP calculus exam, which is at the end of their senior year, allowed them to skip some of the intro math courses. Uh, next to last bullet, they felt that being successful in calculus helped them with their work ethic and organizational skills. And then some schools also have separate placement exams, that one beyond the SAT or ACT, that school and students have to take to kind of place them in course sequences once they've gotten to college. So why are you guys here? Why can't your students just sign up for calculus if it's such an important thing? You might remember, or you might not, we're coming to find out that in seventh grade, you were in a math course that dictated what your track would be going into high school. Uh, at the end of seventh grade, some students were, were eligible to take Algebra One, which is traditionally a high school course. Those students who took Algebra One would free up enough room in their schedule to take AP Calculus. If you didn't have Algebra in eighth grade, your course sequence is going to look like what you see below even if this course sequence is at a pre-AP or above grade level course sequence. So your freshman next year, since this is an eighth grade audience we're talking to, your, probably, your schedule probably looks something like this. Pre-AP Algebra 1 in ninth grade, you could take on-level geometry or pre-AP geometry in 10th grade, Algebra 2 at either level in 11th grade, and in 12th grade, you could take a pre-calculus course, or you could take a statistics course. But notice there's no path to get to that calculus we've talked about unless you take two maths in one year. So if eight classes, two of those would be math. And that's a pretty hard, hard road to take two standard 90-minute math courses in one year. So if you didn't take Algebra 1 in eighth grade, you're kind of behind the ball on trying to get to that calculus. So what are we trying to do then to remedy that? We want to give you the academic skills to be able to take calculus in your senior year. But we also recognize that calculus might be the course they're looking for, college admissions officers, but getting support in an advanced English class. And in this case, in your junior year, there's an AP English class called Language and Composition that is kind of equivalent to freshman college English, giving you both those mathematical and those English language kind of rhetorical and writing skills also are going to set your student apart from the crowd when it comes to college admissions. And by having your student in our bridge program, we can also do number three, kind of build confidence in what we're going to call the soft skills needed to get into competitive schools to the college admissions process. So if you do take the bridge program, this is what your math sequence would look like. So there's two things you'll see on this page. The top sequence is the AP bridge course sequence for math, compared to the old sequence at the bottom, which your student is probably scheduled with now. So what we do in the freshman and sophomore year is your student would be with the same teacher, Miss Ryder, who would in their freshman year in one 90-minute course, teach you pre-AP Algebra 1 and also some geometry, which would be equivalent of the first semester of a standalone geometry class. And in their sophomore year, they would take Algebra 2 and the second half of geometry. So if you compare this sequence to the old sequence on the bottom, you notice we're taking geometry and moving half of it to the freshman course half of it in their sophomore year, which allows them to enter Algebra 2, which normally wouldn't be till in junior year. So you might be asking, how are we doing this? Because you said earlier that it's not, it's not easy to double up on a math class. We're taking geometry and we're paring it down to the most essential standards, which we call power standards only, that a student would meet. And that is not, in our estimation, an entire year of a standalone course. Geometry is kind of an outlier in the math sequence. It's different from the other maths. Calculus success 
you need the algebraic skills, and you need what's called pre-calum engineering. Geometry is a math course, obviously, but it's not as, this is going to sound bad, but it's not as important as the others to get us towards that calculus. It is necessary, but we're going to pare it down to the most essential parts. So what's been created for the bridge program is an online course that pairs the geometry down to its essentials. And that online course would be integrated into what is done in the class period itself and partially at home, while we're also doing the essentials needed for algebra and algebra two. So to be honest, is it more than a normal 90 minute math class that a freshman or sophomore would take? Obviously it's more because you're doing some geometry as well as algebra, but it's not the same as taking two 90 minute courses in math because we're pairing the geometry down to what is necessary, what is essential. So we think there's other facets than just math. English is going to be taught at an advanced level. It'll give you the reading and writing skills needed to both try to earn college credit in English your junior year and that AP language and composition course. And then we can also use the English lens to look at the rules of the college admissions game, the application process, very importantly, essay writing. Most college admissions require an essay from the student, and then also the teacher recommendation process that's needed. On the kind of social emotional side, the teachers I'd introduce you to at the very beginning, Miss Ryder and Miss Perry, are going to be your students' English and math teachers for their entire freshman and sophomore year. So that allows some relationship building and mentoring. Uh, we didn't just pick two, pick any two teachers, we picked two of our best to do this. They're also going to be with the same Coyote Plus mentor or advisor for all four years. Uh, you'll find out that in high school, they have what's called advisory period, 30 minutes a day. And a teacher is assigned a group of students that they stay with. You're going to get that same teacher for four years, which is also part of this bridge idea, so they know what our dual purpose is. Uh, we did, uh, this will be the second year of the program. In the first year, we had a school camp in late July to give your freshmen a kind of intro to heritage, uh, some tours, some ins and outs. We called it high school boot camp. We talked about grade point average, getting kids to think more outside of just the day to day, whether they see themselves in five years, 10 years. Organizational strategies. We took a trip to the health science building at Collin College. Got some ins and outs on some of those kind of career opportunities. And then we had planned uh, this past March before the school shut down, we were going to take a tour of uh, University of Texas in Austin, a day tour, but that got canceled. So speaking of canceled, we don't know if a morning school camp is actually gonna be possible this summer. If your student decides that they wanna take this challenge and join the bridge, then there'd be more information about that if it's possible. So a dual goal is to get your students to be more competitive in the school admissions process. And we're also trying to increase the representation in advanced courses in minority populations. We found that in our research that in the middle school level, uh, black and Latino students did not make up a proportional amount of those uh, advanced math courses in middle school. And that translates to advanced math courses at high school. Now, this isn't just something that, as you can see on the slide, that happens at Heritage. It's a national problem. Uh, Black and Latino students are 37% of high school students, but their participation in advanced AP classes across disciplines is 10% lower. So that speaks to something about lack of representation and what are traditionally college prep courses. We see this happening at Heritage as well. Uh, Black and Latino students are 33% of the student body, but they're only 19% of pre-cal and calculus. Those are the junior and senior level advanced math courses. Uh, we think a lot of this has to do with the fact that what decisions you made in seventh grade impact what happens in 12th grade. So this bridge is also trying to kind of change that dynamic, that percentage of junior and seniors 
and our advanced math courses by getting them on that track. So you might have a lot of questions. Uh, I'm going to give you a link here on the screen to a form if you're already interested and you want to do it. You go to this web address and you'll see questions that look like this on the screen. Do you want to participate? Yes, no, or maybe. If you don't want to, then why not? If you selected maybe, do you need more information? And that's really important if it's a maybe or even a no. And if I can see your answers, then I can reach out and give you more information. And then we're also trying to set up a Zoom. You probably heard too much about the Zoom platform during this COVID closure. But it allows us to have uh, live face-to-face -face conversations over the internet. We want to have this on Wednesday, April 29th. That's a, I believe that's two weeks from today. And in that two weeks from today time frame, you could ask questions because we really want everyone that's invited to say yes, because we think in our first year of this program that it's been very successful. Our bridge students have outperformed others in their same age group in some of our math and English assessments. So we think we're doing the right thing and we'd like you guys to join us. If in the meantime, before that Zoom meeting, if you have any questions, you can email me directly and I can try to answer them over uh, email. Or you can wait till the Zoom and discuss them then. Or back to the Google form, you could just say, let's do it. And I'll take the results from this form, all the yeses. I'll talk to the counselors and get your schedule changed. After this webinar, if I can convince more of you to say yes, then that'll be the case as well. And we'll get underway with a successful 2020-2021 school year. Thanks for your time and feel free to reach out if you have any questions.